Hi, today we're going to do a painting in a day. We're going to start and try and get through this entire painting of the rooster of Portugal, the Gallo de Barcelo. Today we're going to be doing an oil painting of the rooster of Portugal. Starting off, I'm going to put some colors on the palette. Um, we're starting with a very basic sort of color palette. Phthalo blue um, is our darkest and strongest color, which we'll start with. And then we'll be adding a range of cadmium colors from yellow ranging to red. And then in the background, we will use ochre yellow sienna number to fill in the background. That being said, we will also be using white. The rooster itself is white with color on it. So yes, we will be using white. Today's painting is based off the same original photo that I based the sketch doodle from. The painting itself is not based off the sketch doodle. In fact, I had this canvas drawn up weeks before I gave you guys the sketch. In a hurry to get some new content up on the site, I decided to draw it for you until I can get to the painting. Now, my paintings normally take quite a while to paint. And because of that, I have not been able to really upload much for painting, which is why I'm sharing a lot of my drawings with you guys. So starting by filling in some areas with the phthalo blue, and then I use a little bit of titanium white in order to accent the blue. And then quickly jumping into the reds. Um, I'm using a light cadmium red, as well as a dark cadmium red here in order to get different tones. I'm also adding just the slightest bit of uh, white in order to get sort of a, we'll call it a light pinkish color, but I tried very hard not to add enough to really take it to the pink level. Okay, and then once I actually get some of these reds laid in, um, I switch over to my cadmium yellow. Now you'll notice that I don't have to actually add green. I've got enough blue already on the canvas. So as I add the yellow, it starts to touch the edges of the phthalo blue and instantly turns to green. In addition to the cadmium yellow, I'm adding in some cadmium orange to give myself some gradations. Um, I added in on the feet of the rooster as well as into some of the detailing. Once I get some of my colors laid out onto the canvas, I'm ready to pull out my white. I start with titanium white and I mix in a little bit of raw umber. I don't recommend using white straight from the tube without lowering its intensity. Um, if you do, you won't be able to add highlights later. At this point, I get to start having fun using the white as I blend it between all the other colors, um, blending along the edges of all the other colors and making sure that I'm not bleeding the colors out into the whiter areas. I have to be particularly careful where the white meets the blue. The blue is very intense in its pigmentation and blends in and runs into just about everything. It actually gives it a little bit of a nice glow into the white, which I really enjoy. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the balance of where you're going to touch the blue so you don't drag it all across the rest of the painting. You'll notice I've run my hand through the blue several times, which I am now starting to run it through and drop little blue spots all over the canvas. I've had to pick a few places already on the painting itself. I have to admit though, I don't actually mind that because it's actually forcing a little bit of blue and varying colors into places I otherwise may not have actually added it. Um, having the blue hit the white in places I hadn't originally intended actually starts to look like reflected blue color uh, and will also mix into my backgrounds when I get to that point. As Bob Ross used to say, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. Because I just dropped in a lot of my colors when I first dropped them in, I'm able to now start going back into those colors and adjusting not just the colors themselves, but how they react around to the white and basically just refining a lot of what I've already done. Um, in this process, because I'm doing so many areas at once, I do start going back in repeatedly, as well as at the very end of this painting, I go back in and I touch up even more spaces. We get to enjoy going back and forth and painting different areas of this painting all at once. Um, always remember to clean your brush between sections so you're not dragging different colors into areas that you didn't want them. Um, but still, stay nice and loose. The goal of this today is to uh, try and get a painting done in one day. 
at this stage of the painting, it's just a matter of um, define, define, define. Um, you're going back in, you're redefining different areas, you're fixing little spots, you're going back in and adding different colors. Um, anything that catches your eye that you think needs a little bit more detail or a little bit more attention. Um, you go in, you fix areas you see that are wrong, your eye will tell you, you know. I think this is the part where you get to lie to yourself or tell yourself the truth. Um, an artist's biggest critic is himself, and so once you get to the point of the painting that everything's covered, then you use your eye and you start going back. And you can either decide, yes, that looks good enough, or no, I think this needs more detail. No, this needs to be fixed. That area didn't turn out exactly the way I had intended it to. Let me just go back and fix that. And it really comes down to your artist's eye will say, yes, that's okay. Yes, I'm okay with that spot. Or no, I'm really not. And let's get back into it. Sometimes you'll look at a spot and think, oh, that is not what I wanted, but I can't imagine how I'm going to fix that, or I can't imagine the work that I'm going to go into that. Um, and that's that's your choice as an artist right there and then to make the decision, is that worth the time to fix or the time to leave it? Um, I think that's a big decision making point when you're painting as an artist is um, knowing when to stop and knowing when to get in and fix something. So at this point, I keep going through. I'm adding details, I'm adding little bits and pieces, I'm correcting, I'm resolving, I'm looking at different brush stroke on different areas, finding out if the brush stroke is how I want it, finding out if the blends are how I want it, finding out if what I think should be reflective color is existent or non-existent, and basically just accenting anywhere that I can in order to just bring the level of this up just a little bit more. So the biggest part to remember is just that a painting is never finished until you say it's finished. If you want to add more or take something away or you know whatever you want. That, that's the the amazing thing about paint. That's why painting still exists today because the creativity to add and subtract painting lives on until the artist says it's finished. So now I'm really liking the way this is turning out. I like the colors, I like how everything is laying on the canvas, and um, I think I'm okay with it, with the way it is. Um, at this point, it's time to start laying in some background and getting some contrast and seeing how it looks against um, a darker background instead of uh, the white. Okay, so now it's time to get into this background. Um, it's not a super complex background. I wanted the focus to really stay on the rooster itself. Um, originally I had drawn in a slightly different pattern, but when it got down to it, I decided to go with something fairly simple. Um, we're, this is where we're bringing in the browns, we're bringing in the yellow ochre, and we're going to start bringing in a little bit of uh, sienna as we start doing the different tonal ranges of the background. So now this is just going to be an inside view of a room and um, we're going to include a few windows um, nothing too crazy but we are going to you know throw in detail where we can get our blends in uh, blend the the background into the actual rooster along the edges um, you don't want it to look like it's been painted over top of it you want it to sort of blend in a little bit so there's a little bit of blending all the way around and also the same issue that we were having before we're having now as well is that when you get close to those blues um, you've got to make sure that those blues aren't blending into our um, our background colors because of course it's one thing for them to blend into the rooster itself but the blue can't blend right into the, uh, the background. So it's, it's a fine sort of measure. Now I have to add a little bit of a disclaimer here because at this point coming up really quick my um, camera completely ran out of um, recording space and I lost the last part of the recording for this so um, 
it sort of ends with the, the different part of the ceiling as I'm painting and you guys kind of miss as I add in the, uh, the windows and the blue. And the other part that you miss is me adding in um, all the extra details as I went back into the rooster. So I apologize for that. I have some final images here that you can enjoy and if you liked this video please feel free to share it uh, like and subscribe the more subscriptions I get the sooner I am going to be able to do some live streaming and it really helps me out and um, I hope you enjoy it.